I thought there was a little bit more there and um, disappointed myself that uh, you know, I, didn't, I didn't get us to respond sometimes. Um, but I'm not disappointed in the guys. Probably the first time I cried since 06. Yeah, six years ago, probably the last time I cried. And um, just hard, just hard to swallow, man. You know, now your career is over. Hey, Duck fans. Kurt here, again, chiming in with a recap of everything this week in Duck Sports as well as fishduck.com. Well, I was back in Oregon uh, earlier this week for a couple days, and uh, it was actually kind of nice, but apparently right after I left, uh, Snowmageddon occurred. The biggest snowstorm to hit Eugene since 1993. Meanwhile, down here in Los Angeles, it was, dare I say, partly cloudy. So... <laughs> Basketball season is officially over for our Ducks. They beat Iowa at Matt Knight on Sunday, but they lost to Washington in Seattle. Still, it was an impressive run for a team that, again, not a lot was expected. And uh, there's a lot to be proud of. And, of course, thank you to all the seniors. So now it's spring. Well, it was snowing, but it's supposed to be spring. And spring means two things. One, outdoor track season. And two, spring football. Uh, while some schools have already had their spring football and their spring game, Oregon tends to be one of the last in the country to do so. That's because of the quarter system at the university, so everything kind of gets pushed back. It's the same reason why usually Oregon's football team is a month into the season before classes actually start. So spring football will be starting soon enough, but outdoor track already got off to a tremendous start down here in Los Angeles at the USC uh, Trojan Invitational. The women's team continued their dominance. They retained the number one ranking all year in indoor and now outdoor. Uh, they dominated the meet thanks to some tremendous efforts from English Gardner and Kessel Ring, Phyllis Francis, uh, among others. Gardner won the 400 meters. She did it in 53.74. Kessel Ring just barely missed her own personal best time in the 1500 meters. She won that in 418. Taylor Wallace won the 3000 meter steeplechase and Phyllis Francis won the 800 meters. So tremendous showing by the women's team. The men's team Certainly not to be outdone, uh, also had a very solid showing, and they're currently ranked 16th in the nation. Brian Shout won the triple jump, and Boru Goita and Travis Sanford both finished 1 and 2 in the men's 1500. So congratulations to the men and women's track teams for a job well done. All in all, it was a terrific showing for Coach Lanana's teams, and uh, with Oregon's continued dominance in track and field, there have been rumors swirling that following the Olympic trials to be held at Hayward Field in June, that Coach Lanana will be appointed CEO for USA Track and Field. Now, he certainly seems to be the most prolific track coach out there, so the move wouldn't be shocking, but it would certainly be a loss for the University of Oregon if that didn't come to fruition. Right now, that's the only rumor, so let's just wait and see what occurs. Baseball, meanwhile has continued its strong play. They rebounded from a tough 1-2 and two road trip in Seattle by hosting Utah this weekend, and they've won the first two games. The third game is taking place right now as I record this. After these games, the team again hits the road. They have games on Tuesday and Wednesday at Texas State. Softball, meanwhile, they're still ranked on the top 25. They lost to Alabama last week, but Bama's the number one team in the country. The Ducks are playing a series in Corvallis this weekend. They won the first game yesterday, 8-2. They play the Beavers today, Sunday, and Monday to complete the road trip. Then they host Boise State and ASU later this week. As for lacrosse, uh, the season started out kind of rough, uh, but they're on a hot streak right now. They've won their last three matches. Uh, in the last two matches, they scored a season-high 17 goals in each game, and that raises their record to 5-3 and three on the season. The team's on a road trip right now on the East Coast. They're playing High Point in North Carolina, then they're going to play Davidson also in North Carolina, and then uh, they wrap up the road trip with a match against Cincinnati next Sunday. For the tennis teams, uh, the men's match at Fresno State was canceled last week, so that means that their next action comes against Portland State up in Portland on Monday. The women's team has been kind of struggling of late. They started off the season great. Uh, they've dropped their last three matches, unfortunately. They're on the road in Arizona right now. They lost to ASU in Arizona, and they are playing Northern Arizona to wrap up the trip on Monday. In golf, both the men's and women's teams have been very impressive. The number nine ranked Ducks men's team 
finished third in the Band and Dunes Championship this past weekend, led by freshman Rock Cho, who finished third on the individual board with a par 71 on the final day. The women's team, meanwhile, will be in Maui on Monday and Tuesday for the Avenue Spring Break Invitational. That's tough. Getting spring break in Maui. Darn. So that about does it for this week in Oregon sports. Uh, Spring football is going to start soon. Women's soccer is going to start soon. So be sure to go support our beloved Ducks. As for fishduck.com, we had some great articles and some cool videos this past week. So in case you missed anything, here's the rundown. On Monday, we had two articles from newcomers to the Fish Duck team. We had a second guest article from a living legend of college football coaching, Coach Tony DeMio, one of the godfathers of the spread offense. He gave us a breakdown of goal setting in the offseason from the coaches and players' perspective. Really fascinating read. Go give it a look if you missed it the first time. That same day, we had the first of hopefully many articles to come from a true historian of Oregon sports, Jim Maloney. He went into detail covering some of the duck legends who were lethal on both the gridiron and the track. Tuesday is video day at Fish Duck, and Charles had a new one this week that showcased Oregon center Hironis Grassou and the tremendous athleticism that he utilizes to really make Oregon's blocking schemes tick. Also Tuesday, Jared Young featured Robin Cambier, or the Camby Man, and the long path he's traveled to get to Eugene, where he is quickly becoming a star for the men's tennis team. Wednesdays are recruiting days, and Mark Flores gave us another great update on all the buzz that's taking place this week in the world of Oregon recruiting. Now Thursday was a very busy day for fishduck.com. I had my next one-on-one video. This time I sat down with Jeremy King from thesportsbrewery.com. It's a Eugene-based sports website covering local sports, and we talked a lot about Oregon football and other Oregon sports. Also, Chris Carbonier wrapped up his fascinating series that has been uh, analyzing recruiting within the Pac-12. And David Mello had a tremendous interview with former Oregon Ducks safety, now academic advisor in the Jaquas Center, Dietrich Moore. Moore reflected on his playing days, what he's up to now at the university, and he told a great story about teammate Michael Fletcher's impersonation of then defensive coordinator Rich Stubler. It is not to be missed. Please check it out. On Friday, Josh White unveiled a time capsule from a legendary night in the history of Oregon sports, the night Oregon took down number one ranked UCLA at Mac Court in 1974 in his next article in his ongoing series, Tales from the Pit. Saturday is Humor Day at Fish Duck, where we take a, a lighter side look at sports. And once again, Kim Hastings did not disappoint with an article focusing on those little doggies from up north. And today, Sunday, Steve Mayer chimes in reflecting on the grand old lady that is Autzen Stadium and the wonderment of seeing it immersed in snow from the recent storm. I think there was just a car accident or something outside. That was a a massive boom. We'll have plenty more content for you this next week, so be sure to come back often. There'll be new videos, daily articles, and of course, spend some time in our fish tank and fishbowl. Those are our massive video archive and our message board. And now, my random tweet of the week. Hey, will you shut up? Thank you. For my music recommendation this week, I want to shed some light on a theme album from the late 90s that you might have missed, but considering recent musical trends that are taking place right now that have really reinvigorated Americana music, it's one that really should be recognized. It's set the standard for modern day Americana music. It's also one of the most imaginative, vivid albums I've ever heard, Largo. In 1998, an all-star cast of musicians created this project titled Largo. But the roots of this album actually go back a hundred years prior to 1892. That's when Czech composer Antonin Dvorak visited the United States from 1892 through 1896, soaking in the American experience as seen through the eyes of an immigrant. And he poured that experience into his legendary Symphony No. 9, which is better known as the New World Symphony. In the late 90s, 
multiple musicians got together to expand on Dvorak's concepts of retelling the American experience, a modern New World Symphony. Largo aimed to retell that with a modern spin on American music through the eyes of 19th century immigrants. And most of the collaboration was done through members of the 1980s band The Hooters, along with Irish folk band The Chieftains, while guests ranging from Taj Mahal and Joan Osborne to Levon Helm of the band, uh, Carol King, Cyndi Lauper, and, and others provided vocals and instrumentation. The result is a fascinating album that is an audio retelling of the American experience. There are Native American themes, Chinese themes, Irish, Germanic, it really runs the gamut of the great melting pot of the new world. For a history buff like me, it really is a must-have. It's a audio history of the United States. It's quite fascinating. Now, think of how the Oh Brother Where Art Thou soundtrack managed to bridge the gap in sounding both modern and vintage all at the same time, and you'll kind of get the idea of where this album comes from. If you've enjoyed the Americana revival in recent years with artists like Gillian Welch and the Avid Brothers and Mumford and & Sons, uh, you really need to dig through those record bins and find this album. It is a true gem. I absolutely love it. It's a theme concept album that picks up on Dvorak's Symphony. It is the new world experience told through song. So that's it for me this week. Please support all of our Oregon athletics. I know everyone's super excited about spring football. I am too. But there's a lot happening out there. So do your part. Cheer on our ducks. Until next week, this is Kurt saying go fish, get hooked, go ducks. <laughs>